We've got two Tesla Model 3 Highlands, so it's time to find out how they are to drive. The Model 3 Highland does not have any powertrain updates, meaning its battery and motors remain untouched from the old Model 3. Guess everyone was satisfied with them enough that Tesla left them alone. But because of the subtle design changes that have resulted in a reduction in drag, and also because of the new tires with lower rolling resistance, Tesla now claims the Model 3 Highland's range has actually increased. How does the new Model 3 rear-wheel drive standard range handle? Because that is where Tesla have spent the majority of the time in terms of refreshing this car mechanically. That one line that Tesla told us about how they really wanted to keep what people liked about the car and only improve the things that people didn't like as much about the car, that keeps running through my head because I think it's so true. People have always liked the way the Model 3 drives, and here, I have to agree. You know, you've got that instant torque electric car, duh, that's gonna be the case, but the steering, quick, flat throughout, there's not any sort of weird dead space. It's very intuitive steering, it's confidence inspiring, and the regenerative brakes are very smooth. All of that revised work that they did to the front end, to the suspension, the revised dampers, the bushings, all of the extra bonding points between the suspension and the chassis, those are all working in tandem along with the wheels, the revised brake rotors to provide a far, far more cohesive driving experience. And that's not to say that the previous Model 3 wasn't a great driving car. It was a very fun driving car. It handled remarkably well. It did track a little bit, I found, especially when you were pushing it through a corner. And I'm happy to report as I push it through this corner now, Yes, a little bit of understeer, but it's not tracking. They've done a lot of really good work to try and flatten this car out. Keep it just as dynamic as it was before, but add a sense of refinement. And that, I think, is the other big keyword when we're talking about Model 3, it's refinement. And that is shown at every level and in every department. The exterior is refined. You put it next to an old one and all of a sudden you can see clearly how all of the little incremental differences, not all of which have been made purely for aesthetic reasons, let's not forget, a lot of them have been to do with range, but how they've all come together to create a very, very cohesive design. I would almost say that the Model 3 never had a cohesive design. It didn't have its own design language because it always felt like a slightly shrunk and warped Model S. Now though, I think the Model 3 stands alone, not only with its own unique design its own unique perspective on Tesla's design DNA and language it's also a very refined and grown up looking Tesla not to say that it's less playful but it just looks a bit more purposeful on the road for a lot of people driving an electric car a Tesla it's the first time they will have experienced one pedal driving it's real nice here and the chassis feels good it feels pretty balanced in these corners you feel like you can drive this car fast. You know, there's that nice low center of gravity that kind of keeps you planted through the corner, makes you feel good about doing these things. The last Model 3 was very obviously steel sprung. Well, this one, this one still is, but it's less in your face about it. It rides way better now. It doesn't bump as much over uneven pavement. Yeah, this thing holds corners nice. It's good. Man, you cannot underestimate the power of low center of gravity. This is also has some of the nicer steering out of all of the electric cars I've driven. Usually steering feels kind of dead or numb off center. Here it feels very linear. So the steering is calibrated well. So much of what Tesla has done to this new Model 3 has not only been about the driver, but has been about the passenger is improved vastly. This acoustic glass, they've done great work to try and make this a quieter, more comfortable, more relaxing place to be. Because of the way that hood is newly tapered and it kind of shoots the wind over the windshield, it's not as loud in here. So whatever they did worked. It feels like not a new car. It feels like an improved car. And I think that's exactly what they were going towards because the Model 3 objectively 
pretty good car on its own. There were a few points that needed some refinements, a little sanding here and there, you know, but that's exactly what they did. They left the core thing alone and they made some of the pain points better. So color me impressed. Speaking of improvements, earlier we told you that the Motor Trend testing team had gotten their hands on the new Model 3 Highlands to put them through their paces. Well, the results are in and it makes for fascinating reading. The all-wheel drive dual motor Highland did a 0 to 60 in 4 seconds and the rear wheel drive single motor did it in 5.6. In braking from 60 miles an hour to a dead stop, the all-wheel drive car took 114 feet and the rear wheel drive took 115. But range, that's the crucial one. We subjected both cars to the Motor Trend real world range test, driving them at 95% of their batteries charged and at a constant 70 miles an hour. The results? The standard range Model 3 put down 211 miles. The long range returned 250. And just for fun, we tested the old Model 3 long range and it did 258 miles. However, we'll also note the old car was using smaller wheels than the new car. So it was a bit like comparing Gala apples to Honeycrisp apples.